Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts back with part two of my Buyer SFR1 uh, instructional videos. Today I'm going to show how to add engine start to a switch, how to add volume control to the radio transmitter so you can control it on the fly, and how to add custom sounds including horns and some other cool features. I think you're going to like this. Uh, all about sound today and uh, we're going to do a complete series on this, so here we go with part two. Let's get started. In the part one video, we got the basic system hooked up with the first two channels hooked up. Now we're going to hook up another channel um, so that we can activate more features. Now, there's two ways to do this. One um, is to hook up just each channel to an input. Now we've already hooked up, there's inputs number one and two here, and three, four, five, and six are here. So you can hook up to six different channels directly to this unit. Um, and the hookups here don't necessarily correspond to the channels on the receiver. The other way to do it is to use a radio that has a capa capability to do SBUS. And then you can just hook, hook up one cable and use every channel on the radio, whether it's a 10 channel radio or a 14 channel radio, it doesn't matter. So we're going to start today by first hooking it up just with a standard system that you would do on a normal 4 or 6 channel radio. So I'm going to take this patch cable and plug it into channel 2. Okay, now channel 2 on my transmitter is this stick right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take that and plug it into the number three spot, which is the first in line. Remember, this is one and two here. And so that's how you plug that in. And now we've added this stick to our unit. So I'm going to show you how to program functions on that stick now that we've got this plugged in. So here we go. Let's go to work on uh, setting up this channel that we just added. We're going to go over here to Configuration, which is kind of where we do everything now. And right here we've got Prop 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now remember, I plugged that channel 2 from the receiver into number 3 on the SFR, which is right there, Prop 3. Prop 2, if you take a look at it, It'll say channel 2 is not available because this channel is used for steering. Okay, we've already got that hooked up. So prop 3 is going to be this stick right here. Now you can see there are some things already filled in. And that's from the program we originally downloaded. So first thing I want to do is erase those. So I click the drop down arrow and I go to not used right there and OK, and that erases it. So I'm going to erase all four of these. Not used. Not used. And not used. So basically we just erase this. Now, what I want to do is I want to take and add something into the down part of the stick. Now, this little colored graph here is basically a representation of the stick. So, when the stick is up, we have a function. When it's down, we have a function. When it's partway up or down, we have a function. When it's in the middle, we can have a function. So, we're going to use this drop down here, and we're going to go short in position. That means when we move the stick down like this, it'll do something. And what we want to do is over here, we want to have the engine sound on and off. Okay, and we're going to click OK. And now you can see it filled in engine sound on and off. So far, that's all we're going to do. Now, we're going to go back here to our original engine sound configuration, general, and we're going to go to engine sound. Remember we had it set so we turn the engine sound automatically by motion. We're going to turn that off. 
Because what's going to happen now is we're going to turn it on with a stick movement instead. Okay, we're going to turn it on with that stick movement. So we've made a few changes. I'm going to power up this, uh, got to plug a battery in here, power up my unit. And we're going to transfer the project data. And we'll transfer it and then we'll see what happens. So what I've done, remember, is I turned off the engine down starting with the stick. So now my, my motor still runs, but the engine doesn't come on. And what I did... ...was have the engine sound come on with this stick. And also shut back off. So by adding that extra patch cable, I activated this stick. Now I can have the up version of this stick do something else. So let's take a look at the computer again and come up with something else. So back here on my computer, again we're on Prop 3. And we've got the engine sound on and off down here on the bottom, which was, as we noted, moving the stick down. So now I'm going to put something in here in the stick up. Now what I'm going to put in there, let's take a look at this additional sound. So here's a whole bunch of sounds we have to check from, and we'll do this horn O2. Let's see what that sounds like. Or how about this horn? A little longer. So Let's go with this Horn 02. We'll go back to configuration. We use this drop down. We'll go to additional sound right here, Horn 02. Right there, and we'll click OK. And we'll transfer the data. Now I'm not even going to uh, switch the camera. Oh, it's not saved yet. It's still saving. Okay, now it's saved. Okay, so now I've added that sound. Now let's say I don't like that sound. I can go back up here click the down arrow and pick a different sound. Let's try this horn 09 sound and see what it sounds like. Click OK, click transfer. This is the beauty of the system, the SFR1 system, is you can change anything at any time and pretty much instantly. You can see how you like it, you can go back and forth, you can use different sticks to activate the sounds. We're updating right here, it's updated. Oh, I like that sound much better. Engine start. Engine stop. Okay, that's how that works. It's actually quite simple. I'm going to I'm going to show this patch cable one more time. I just wanted to show one more time that I plug this into channel 2 on my receiver, which is this stick right here, and I plugged it into prop 3. Now those props are marked here on the side, prop 3, 4, 5 and 6. They're also shown in the manual. So prop 3 is where I plugged it in. Now I could easily have plugged it into prop 4, prop 5, and we would have had, switch back over the computer here, we would have been able to use prop 4, prop 5, or prop 6. So I could plug several different patch cables from my receiver into the unit and use several different sticks or switches or anything else. Uh, with the FlySky radio you can assign a, a switch to a channel and you can use that. So actually um, I'm going to show how we do that. 
So let's show how to set up a switch on this that would hook to the unit. So I want to, we already hooked this to it. I want to hook this switch to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the menu here and I'll go to display and you can see that this switch is hooked to channel 6. Okay, great. Turn that off. Move the camera a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another patch cable and I'm going to hook it to channel 6 because that we just determined that was hooked to that switch and I am going to hook that to prop 6. Now I could hook it to prop 4 or any prop I want but I'm going to hook it to prop 6. Sometimes it's good to have a piece of paper to make notes. So we hooked that to prop 6. Now I'll be right back. We're going to go to the computer. So we hooked up this switch to prop 6. So we're going to go here to prop 6 and click it. And then we're going to put this short position. We're going to put engine on and off. And we're going to transfer the product project data. So now with a short flick we should be able to turn the engine sound on and off with the radio. Let that get all saved. I guess I better turn this on. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Now there's another cool thing. We'll go back here to Prop 3. Prop 3, remember, is this stick. So this is a short in position, but there's also a long in position. So if we click the drop down, we're going to go to this additional sound horn eyes of Texas and click OK. We're going to transfer the project data. We'll wait till that saves. It'll take just a minute here. So now we have two sounds on the same stick. A short in position and a long in position. So the short in position is the same. The long Short, long. Great thing about this is you can get multiple functions off of one stick. So we've got uh, a part, part, partial movement of the stick, a full movement of the stick. So partial movement quickly will do this function. Partial movement quickly will do this function. Down, you've got two here, and then a long position on each of those will go here. So you can get eight different functions off of this one switch. And, and so with a four channel radio, you can get eight off of this one, eight off of this one, your throttle, your steering, you could have you know, 16, 20 channels off of just a four channel radio. So that's how you assign these to um, a stick. Now, Two other cool functions I want to show. One of them is custom sounds. So we'll, we'll come back to the computer here in a second and we're going to put a custom sound in that we're going to rip off of YouTube. So what I'm going to show here is how to take a sound clip off of YouTube and put it onto your um, SFR1. And I'm also going to show how to take a sound clip from your phone and put it on there. Now, I actually shot this yesterday, uploaded it to YouTube, and got a copyright violation strike because in the background, some Eastbound and Down was playing. So I'm going to show this without sound, and then later, um, I'll probably, I'll, I'll reference it later in the video, but I'll probably put a clip on my Hobby Concepts uh, Facebook page so you can hear it. But anyway, 
Here's, here's YouTube. I put Smokey Bandit CB in the search bar and I got this really cool clip, 34 seconds of CB talk from Smokey and the Bandit. So when I play it, uh, it's got great audio, which I can't play because of copyright issues. But uh, here's how you save it for your beer system. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to copy the URL. So we'll copy that to the clipboard. And then we'll make this small. Now the beer program comes with a great... Uh, go to my beer program. Okay, right down here it comes with a program called YouTube Converter. Uh, that's awesome. It comes free with the, with the beer um, little USB. So you just click this and upload this program onto your computer. All right. Now, once you got that uploaded on your computer, it looks like this. So we'll just do that. We'll paste the URL in there and we'll click Add. Okay, and then we'll click to download. And what this does is it downloads the audio off of that YouTube clip. So you can take any YouTube clip you want and take the audio. Um, I'll also probably do the song Eastbound and Down. All right, so now that this is here, okay, we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, save that. Um, let's see, it saves here in Users um, Jacob, okay? So that's automatically saved, so we're all done. So now what I have to do is convert it to a a file that the beer system can use, and that's a WAV file. So for that, I use a program called Audacity. We'll start that here. It's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Audacity. It's a free program you download off the internet. And what that is, is it's a file converter. So I'll click File, and I'll click Import. Okay, and Import Audio, and then, uh, Here's that 34 seconds of CB talk. Okay, now, um, when you play, you can play it here so you can listen to it and make sure everything's fine. Again, I have my computer muted because of the YouTube thing. So, uh, that's great. So, the only problem is we need to output it as a WAV file, and it's got to be the project rate down here has to be 44100. Okay, so you can input any kind of file, but you output it as a WAV file at 44100. So you go back here to File, you go Export, Export as a WAV. Okay, that's it. So now we're gonna we're gonna call this uh, uh, CB Smoky 34. W A V. All right, we'll save it. Click OK, and we can close this. All right, close that. No, all right. Okay, so we converted that file and we saved it. So now what we do is we go back to our, our um, sound teacher software and we'll go to the additional sound tab. Now, uh, we've got a couple blank spots down here at the bottom, 17 and 18. So we're going to put that file that we just saved right here. Uh, CB Smokey 34 Wave. Right there. All right, and uh, now that file is saved in our system. Now I also want to show taking a, a file off my phone. Okay, so now in my office wall here, we'll just zip my camera around. You can see I've got uh, Smokey and the Bandit playing on my big screen TV. So what I did was I played this little segment and then recorded it with my cell phone. All right. So let me come back here to my computer. Sorry for the little thing. 
But this recording... Okay, so uh, that file should not have a copyright strike because it's just talking. So what I did was I took that file, I emailed it to myself, I used a sound converter because it's an MP4A file. So I used a sound converter called Cloud Convert, dropped that file in there, you can see it right there, Hot Pants CB Chatter and converted it to a WAV file and downloaded it. And then I threw it in Audacity just like the other file and because I had to change the the uh, output rate let me show you here I had to change the output rate to 44100 and then I saved that file. Okay so we're going to put it in this spot here number 18 and it's CB, it's hot pants CB chatter, right there. Okay, so I put it in spot number 18. So now the trick is to put those into the uh, system. So we're going to go to configuration, and we're on prop 3, which, as we remember, is this stick right here, and we're going to put those in the down position. So we're going to drop this down. We're going to find additional sound 18, which is the hot pants sound, and click OK. And that's in the short position. And then we'll find sound 17, which is the CB off of YouTube, and put that in the long position. All right, so the short sound, the hot pants, will be like that, and the long sound will be holding it down. All right, so we save those, and now we've got to update the product data. So we'll go transfer project data, just like before. All right, now, these are a couple of long sounds. It's going to take four minutes to update this. So I'm going to shut the camera off. Then when I come back, I'll show you um, how those sounds loaded on there. And you can, with this way, you can download virtually any sound you want. You can take your phone. You can go out and record semis driving down the road. You can, uh, you can uh, talk, CB chatter, you can use your own voice, you can use music or sounds or, or special effects from anywhere, sirens, whatever you want, you can put in here. Now also, uh, you can put them in a, a different place called the Wave Player, and I'll come back and show that in a little bit. So you can turn the sounds on and off whenever you want. So I'm going to shut off the camera while this updates, and then I'll be back. So my download's finished. So now I still have my, my horn sound, and now if everything worked right, if I do it quickly, I should have the hot pants uh, sound that I copied on my cell phone. Breaker 1-9, Breaker 1-9, is that hot pants hitting it out here yakking out there? And he wants to know. This is a bad dog. <laughs> well, where are you, you bodied up smooth talking thing? Okay, yeah, that worked good. Now, I don't want to play too much of it because when I upload this, I don't want any copyright strikes. Now, if I if I pull this down and hold it, let's uh, let this video, let's let this one finish here. If I pull it down and hold it, I'll get the, uh, the, the sound I copied off YouTube. Now, I'm going to go back to the computer because there's one more thing I want to show you about these uh, kind of sounds. All right, back here on the computer. So we put that, those two sounds down here under additional sounds. And it's this place where we have the horns and all that kind of stuff. The only problem with this is that when you start one of these sounds, it, you can't stop it. So if we go over here a couple more to the wave player, okay, we also have a bunch of empty spots here and we can put the sounds here we can do it the same way and put the sound here. Okay, and now when we go to the configuration, we could pick it off of the wave player, which is right here, wave player 
play stop okay and and then you can start the sound and stop the sound so the wave player is uh, another place where you can put sounds additional sounds or wave player all right so now uh, let's talk about working on the volume control to remotely control the volume I decided to use this knob right here VRA and so what I did was I assigned VRA to channel 5 on the transmitter then I plugged in a patch cable from channel 5 to prop 5 so that basically takes this knob and puts it on prop 5 here now on the computer, and we'll just zip over here, zoom in, what you can see is I've got prop 5 up here, and I've got volume up in position static and volume down in position static. And the way I did that, of course, was just the drop down arrow, and then I clicked volume up and clicked OK. So what that means is that when I rotate the knob up the volume will go up and when I rotate it that way the volume will go down and uh, I already transferred everything over so let's fire it up I'm gonna whip this back here to the equipment so I've got my sound Oh, <laughs> I've got it all the way down. That's why it didn't turn on. So now I'm turning it up. And now I'm turning it down. And the way it works is turn it up here. And then when it gets to the position I like, I just turn it back to the middle. Turn it down. It's really neat to be able to control the volume from the radio. So that's how, uh, that's how that works. So you can assign pretty much any function to any channel or any switch. And when I come back in part three, we'll do the lights. So there goes part two. Um, boy, <laughs> a lot of ground covered in this one. Uh, we showed how to add additional sounds. How to move the start and stop sounds to a switch instead of the lever. I still really like that that sound and how to um, download additional audio so that was a lot of ground covered but it was all to do with sound um, it is a very flexible system and you can see how you can really literally put anything you want on there in the way of sounds and it's really fun to have that kind of stuff in your truck so there we go with part two that'll be the end of this one when part three i'll come back and i'm going to do some basic lighting and that'll give us the three basic parts of the system how to hook up the motor and speed control and the basic engine sound how to do the additional sounds and the additional um, switch programming and then how to do the basic lights so watch for part three coming soon as always in the description for this video there's going to be links and additional information you can uh, you can go there and or you can go to my website hobbyconcepts.net my email is also in the in the um, video description and uh, boy I, I I appreciate you watching I know these are a little bit technical videos these are really more instructional um, but I will be back soon with some of my uh, Tamiya truck builds. So anyway, I really appreciate, appreciate you watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time.